Greetings everyone, this is Norn Expert here back again with another video. Today we are going to be solving problem number 38 and difficulty is being rated at is hard. Uh, this problem was asked from Microsoft and let's just get down to it. So you have a n by n board or a chess board and you need to write a function that given n we return the number of possible arrangements of the board where n queens can be placed on the board without threatening each other. Uh, that is, no two queens share the same row, column, or diagonal. Uh, cool, actually this is a variation of a pretty famous backtracking problem, uh, and the name of the problem is the n-queens problem. Again, you can check out uh, that thing, it's pretty famous. Uh, but this is actually a pretty big variation over it, and fortunately we were able to find a similar problem on lead code. Uh, again, you can pause this video and check out the link given in the description below. Um, and you can see over here it's the exact same problem, um, almost exact same problem where you have uh, n into n chessboard and we need to you know place all the queens in such a way that no two queens are attacking each other. So here's a depiction and as you can see none of the queens are um, you know can attack each other. Uh, again the way a queen can attack uh, another queen is just by going through its moves and a set of moves which are actually uh, you know, allowed for a queen is that they can go up, down, left, right, or diagonally. Uh, the only difference in this problem is that, you know, uh, the output is actually not a number and it's actually a list representation of all the distinct board configurations of the end queen's placement, uh, where basically a Q uh, is a queen and a full stop or a dot is denoting an empty space. And we need to return this. Um, uh, whenever we whenever we solve the uh, problem, cool. Again, so that's just one thing that we need to you know take care of. Um, but all in all, you know this is a pretty uh, easy problem to do if you sort of get the flow or sort of you know have an understanding of what all is required. So whenever you you know find a problem where you need to you know compute the parts or you know compute the variations of the to total combinations your thinking should go in a recursive way um, and for this problem what we'll be doing is we'll be going through a DFS approach. So the idea here is that we want to have a DFS helper function to find the solutions recursively and the solution will be found when the length of the queens uh, or when the length of the uh, all the queens that we placed is equal to n. Right? Um, cool. So again, uh, you know, let's just talk a little bit more about this. Um, so our approach is going to be a DFS approach um, and also you know we need to understand what all parameters will be passing inside our DFS as well. So let's just do that but before we do that uh, we always start with our base conditions so to get us going so let's just do that like if there is nothing given in n if n is an invalid value we return an empty list. Now one thing which we note is is that you know uh, we need a list which is going to be returned as well. So let's just make our result list, which is going to store all our configurations or computations that we've come up with so far. And now we just need to make our DFS utility or helper function. Um, one thing over here, uh, which is actually pretty self-justified, is that uh, the way you can sort of go about it is, is that you don't really need to worry about the rows as such. Um, and the reason for that is, is that you know for a fact that each um, queen is going to occupy its own row. Right, so as as you can see over here, um, uh, this particular guy. Okay, these are the columns, but this entire row is being occupied by this queen, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do is, uh, since we already know that the row is going to be occupied, we're just going to store the column index, and then we're going to go on from there. Um, cool. So the way we'll be doing that is we're going to have a few variables. So we're going to have queens. Uh, let's just write a few doc strings to help others understand what the queens are supposed to do. So the queens parameter is going to be a list representation of all the indexes that we've encountered so far. Um, and by the indexes, I mean um, not the indexes as such, but the column index of that particular thing. So let's just be more clear about that. Let's just say length of column index which has been occupied. Uh, uh, yeah, cool. Again, um, this is 
uh, pretty easy to understand. All you're going to do is Queens is going to be a list, and inside the list, you're going to have an integer, uh, a list of you know, integers, and the integer is basically going to help us denote what's the column index, and that's basically it. Um, also, we're going to have uh, two other values, um, and they're going to be x, y, diff, and I'll just get into what they are. So they're going to be x, y, diff, and x, y, sum. So um, if you didn't know what x, y, diff is, I'll explain it. Let me just write them down. These two are going to be list representations. Um, and what they are actually is, is a, they actually been computed through mathematical term, and I'll just, you know, help you understand that as well. So these two particular variables are going to help us understand, or they're going to help us, you know, um, go through the diagonal representation of the queen. So let's say that you have a queen over here. So if you know, can go up and this can go down. So those things will be, you know, will be handled by the row and the queen's index, uh, the column index. But we also need to understand that it can go diagonally here, 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 and here. So all in all, the way we can you know go about it is that um, if you you know use some mathematics, you can see for a fact that um, each line is actually represented as y equal to mx plus c, and over here your m is basically a slope of either minus one or one. Um, again, this is pretty simple to understand why that is. Um, and the way you can sort of you know understand um, if you if you only have a point let's say x comma y and you want to you know place a new point let's say p comma q um, basically you can say that you know p comma q cannot be um, cannot be justified if it does not if it lies into the x comma y property um, again the way you can go about it is is let's just say you have x comma y here. So the two computations that you can make is that, as I mentioned before, you either have minus one, so let's just write that minus one as a slope, and you have x, and you do plus c, right? Uh, that's one of your representations of the slope or the lines that you want to make, and the other one would be one into x plus c, right? And if you use the same thing for p comma q, you need to understand that the following, you know, when you formulate all of this out, it basically, you know, comes out to be um, a representation where you say, hey, if p plus q is equal to x plus y, or p minus q is equal to x minus y, um, then basically p comma q is invalid and it cannot be justified. Um, basically, this is a way of, you know, understanding whether uh, the diagonals are meeting and if they are, um, then that's something that we cannot you know, use. Um, cool. Again, if you didn't understand what this is, you can you know compute the thing on your own. Uh, but it's basically a transformation. Uh, so either uh, your slope sort of goes up or down, and we can solve uh, the point of the line in which it would intercept your other lines as well. Um, and that's basically it. So these, this is the entire approach that we're going to be using, and the rule is something which will help us identify whether this is safe or not. All right, cool. So let's just get down to it. So what we're going to do is, uh, let's just write pass over here, and let's just you know execute this function. Now, the parameters, the initial parameters that we're going to be sending would be an empty list, which is pretty obvious because you know you've not put any queens on any of the elements yet. And when we when we reach our n, let's just say, hey, okay, let's just first save length of queens inside a variable. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, if p is equal equal to n, which is the length of the board, when that happens, you know, push in the queens output inside result. So we'll do that. We'll do result dot append uh, queens, and we're going to return so that it breaks out of this recursive call. Um, and that's basically going to help us identify, you know, everything else. And P, in a way, you can sort of you know, construe this um, as we're using this in our example as well as the row. And Q is going to be the column, right? So that's the beginning approach. Now what we want to do is, um, since we already know that the row is already justified, and we need to go through each column. So the way we'll go about it is, is that we're going to call a for loop. 
like we do in DFS, we're going to call a for loop for all the columns which are there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to recursively call the function again if the thing is safe or not, if the point is safe or not. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to say for Q in range to n, basically for all the columns, we need to check whether um, Q is not in Queens. Again, if you don't understand what this means, it's basically stating that if the column is not been occupied, because you know for a fact that the columns uh, does not need to be occupied in order for you to place it over there. So if Q is not in Queens, right? And also we need to you know, follow up on these rules as well, which uh, state the diagonality as well. So we can just say, hey, if P minus Q is not in X, Y, diff, and P plus Q, is also not in x y sum basically this entire thing is safe so p comma q in that scenario is safe and what we're going to do is we're going to pass those variables to our dfs again so let's just do that we're going to dfs and we're going to do queens plus q and the reason for that is basically we need to attach a new reference and when we do this it's going to make a new list and then pass it to our, our dfs as a reference and then it can you know move forward from there Again, you know, uh, Python uses pass by reference, and that's the main reason why we're doing this. So you have DFS, Queens plus Q. Basically, what you're doing is you're attaching the column, which we, all, which we know that we're going to do. We're going to be attaching the column index to the Queens list. So we're attaching the column index, which is safe. And also, inside XY div and XY sum, we need to place in P minus Q and P, P plus Q as well. So let's do that. Let's just say, hey, XY div needs to also append p minus q in it and next by sum needs to update p plus q as well and that's basically it um there's not much required over here all you're doing is you're using a dfs approach but you know for a fact that the rows can rows are obviously going to be unique so the columns are the indexes that you really want and due to that reason you're using the queens uh sorry the queens list to store the column indexes and then basically move on from there. Uh, again, if we just print out the result, what you're going to do is, uh, what you're going to, you know, expect to get is is a list representation of uh, another list which is going to contain the indexes of the queen. So as you can see here, um, the indexes of the queen is one, three, zero, and two, and you can see that all of them are unique. That's basically due to this condition, which is helping us identify whether there are no with another queen and same thing over here you have two zero three and one um and that's basically it um again you can sort of you know check it with this guy um all in all it's the exact same thing um uh, and since we've done all this you know we need to also return it as the expected result um and that's just a lot of um that's just a you know fancy way of writing it down it's not really relevant to the algorithm as such so let's just do that um, and I'm going to be quick about this. Um, we're going to do result, we're going to write a list comprehension. Um, and again, if you don't know what it is, we're just basically, you know, uh, manipulating the data in such a way that we can, you know, understand, uh, understand the values that we've gotten so far. So let's just do that. Let's just say, hey, whoops, sorry. So for this is a solution in result, we are going to call onto the list representation where we're going to say, hey, I need to pass in um, for each element inside the solution. So basically for each element or each index inside the queen. So what we're going to do is for i in sol, where i is going to justify the queen index, all we need to do is we just need to print it out. So let's just do that. Let's just say, hey, you need to put in a dot fill index i, right? And what you want to do is after that you want to place in Q and after that what you want to do is you want to place in the dots to just fill out the rest of the columns. So this and the computation would be N minus I minus one because minus one is for the queen which has already occupied the space. So all in all the total length of the string would be N. Uh, let's just try running this code. Hopefully this should run fine. Cool, and as you can see over here, it's running perfectly. Um, again, all you have done is you've just used a DFS approach just to compute 
all the uh, configurations or where you can place the queens in such a way that none of the collisions happen and the only thing only few things that you know we've taken into consideration is that we already know which row we already know that it's going to be for each individual row and all we've stored inside the queens is the column index um, and also while doing that we've also saved in something called as an xy diff and as xy sum which basically computes this particular rule and this rule has just been formulated through a, through normal mathematics it's not it's not really that complicated uh, but if you find this particular thing as very very complicated you can use another approach which is pretty simple you can just say hey i need to go diagonally up or diagonally uh, uh, down or something like that and just you know go about it from there so basically two of the for loop should help you understand whether uh, p comma q is safe or not um cool let's just try submitting this one more time hopefully this should get submitted Cool, and as you can see, it's faster than 93% of the solutions. And the reason for that is just because um, we're just traversing through all the things which are actually required, and and that's basically it. So again, um, if you did not understand something, do leave it in the comment section below, and I'd love to solve all your queries. And if you did like this video, um, do give a like and do subscribe to our channel. Discussion over here, and we would love to have you with us. Um, also, if you've already subscribed, you're awesome, we all know it, and have an awesome day. Thank you.